So here's some commie nonsense network on the insurrection. Commie nonsense network being CNN. You know I love CNN. If I love anybody, got to get some super chats to to read for you guys. I have some super chats to read for you guys too, and respond to. I have some screenshots in under this J6 CR blank blank word in that folder there, Hassan. Look at this. CNN politics. How the 14th Amendment against Trump, that's our greatest president, went from a pipe dream fantasy, and that's a quote, to the so-called Supreme Court. Well, it's been a long, the arduous march of communism. Is that what the arduous march stands for? Communism? It's a, they're working the long game. They're true believers. They don't care if they don't live to see the day when full-blown communism, mama spirit, sat satanic, godless, atheist um, religion runs all of society and oppresses the people. They don't mind if it takes generations. Uh, they've been filling the courts with corrupt liberal activist judges all the way up to the so-called Supreme Court with Katanji Onyika Brown Jackson and that wise Latina. I use the term wise loosely. She called herself that, or perhaps, allegedly. Uh, the one whom Ob Obama appointed. Who's that Hispanic gal? Sonia Sotomayor. I'm shaking my head. And long before that, they had male lamos, liberals in the su so-called Supreme Court of the United States of America. That's how this, so the 14th Amendment is not just about allowing anchor babies to be so-called citizens, so-called natural-born citizens. The 14th Amendment allowed natural-born slaves to become considered citizens, all right? Because they were born under our jurisdiction. So we're like, let them be Americans. Not me, but this, the powers that be. Well, they also, it was related to the so-called Civil War. And they said that the, the beautiful Confederate American heroes were not allowed to be running for office because they participated in insurrection, which is false. It's false. It was l false then, and it's false today. Even more false today. Because Trump would have negotiated around Civil War. He would have... Because he's a man of peace. He wants peace. He has f supported wars, escalated wars. He did not start any new wars, but he did escalate wars, for better or worse. And so, you know. But he wants peace. You have to have peace. So he didn't want any insurrection, but they accuse him. Because they're lamos, communists. And it has this picture of this woman right here that we're looking at in this... This lady, former Colorado legislator, Norma Anderson. She looks like somebody JLP would interview on the Fallen State. Or the radio show. In Lakewood, Colorado. Monday, January 29th, 2024. I don't know why they show this woman. Maybe she was involved. She's former. Former Colorado legislator. Old lady. Not that old. There are ladies who are older than this. Young whippersnapper brat of a woman, <laughs> I'm just calling her a brat, who listened to Hake and JLP. Shout out. But this gal, nice scenery. Looks maybe Hispanic or not normal white, even though she has a normal white last name, maybe part American Indian. A little heavy on the makeup for my taste. Those eyebrows don't look natural. <laughs> but anyway. You know, mildly attractive older lady. So, I don't know. Show this guy. This guy's rough to... <laughs> I can call guys rough. I can, I can go harder on the guys because Hake is a male feminist. I'm, I'm not purposely. Just I'm trying to shed my feminism. Indiana University law professor Gerard... Magliocha, Magliocha, how do you pronounce this name? MLG, 
L I O C C A, an expert on the 14th Amendment's insurrectionist ban. He testified at the Our Greatest President, Donald J. Trump's disqualification trial in Colorado way back in November of last year, 2023. Jack Dempsey, far left extremist AP, took that photo. And, um, one of the people whom they used, so this guy inadvertently, totally a, totally not on purpose, he published a paper in December of 2020. December of 2020, after they, uh, after they rightfully won the election, you know, the Biden team, rightfully and completely on the up and up won the election with 81 million votes. Um, you know, with the China virus, they were allowing every idiot to vote. Made it very easy. You could go to any precinct, at least in my area. I could have gone to any, pre- any one of any number of precincts within very short drive to uh, go vote. They mailed in, they voluntarily sent you mail-in ballots, many of you guys, including Hake. So that's partly why both Trump and Biden got so many votes, many more votes than ever, because they made it, and they super hyped the election, the mainstream media, social media, and and, uh, everybody, because they wanted Trump to lose big time. Okay, so this guy published a paper about the so-called insurrection clause of the 14th Amendment that says blah, 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 Confederate leaders who participated in insurrection against the United States can't hold office anymore. According to, to him and them and whatever. I think we should abolish the 14th Amendment entirely. No more anchor babies and no more uh, bans on insurrectionists because insurrectionists are some of the best people. Here's one person who got suspended Oh, make sure the vent is closed. It almost feels like the heater's on in here. (laughs) Nice. Uh, This whole thing started on a small scale, says this Griffin person, Cooey Cooey Griffin, with the specific goal of bringing it up to the big stage with Donald Trump. Cooey Griffin, remember this guy? Uh, Go to number three, Cooey Cooey Griffin. C-O-U-Y Griffin, a pro-Trump fella. Cowboys for Trump guy. This was the first time in 103 years that the disqualification clause was enforced. I almost feel like the, having the door open again. I know the bill likes it, things professional. And no outside ambient noise getting in. Vacuum cleaners and people shouting and yelling. But I don't care. I like it cool in here and comfy. <laughs> Bring in some cool air. Thank you, man. Yeah, 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 do that. Then New Mexico County Commissioner Cui Griffin. Apologies to Cui if I'm butchering your first name, man. Seen filming a video in January 6th of 2021 AD. That's the day of the so-called insurrection. They tried to put it on the scale of 9-11. Was convicted for his actions. What actions? He just showed up and was excited for Trump, supporting Trump. He wanted election integrity, he thought. Uh, Removed from office based on the so-called 14th Amendment's insurrectionist ban. So they used him to get to Trump. It's kind of like when I was producer of the Jesse Lee Peterson show. Say, let's let's pretend I wanted to get my competitor, Joe Rogan, on the... uh, on to the Jesse Lee Peterson show or the Hake Report. I would get some of his little buddies first. Uh, So same thing with Trump. I would get, if I was trying to take down Trump and I was a dumb liberal, evil person, I would go after Trump's little buddies like Cooey Griffin, Cowboys for Trump. Same idea. Does it make sense? Sort of? Sort of. Here's another male who's involved in this thing. Uh, black. So, Coy Griffin is a good guy. The only white man there. Well, normal white. I don't know. The other guy looked kind of funny to me. 
Donald Sherman, chief counsel at, so, so in other words, he's a lawyer, maybe a liar. Actually, I don't know which side this guy's on, so don't let me not, not bash him too harshly until I figure it out roughly. Donald Sherman, chief counsel at Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics. Crew. What? How does that spell crew? Where's the W? I don't know. Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics. Crew appears at a Senate hearing in June 2023. You black. There was this trial judge named Sarah Wallace in one of these trials or this trial or whatever wrote in her ruling, a, a woman judge, female judge, wrote in her ruling that someone's gripping testimony helped her conclude that there was an insurrection and that the mob was there on Trump's behalf. I'm almost spitting. Silly. Ridiculous. As the, um, not morally straight, but independent and fairly honest journalist who's been on Tucker Carlson's show, he's been on Fox News, Glenn Greenwald, I think he, like, made Destiny look silly because he's like, did Trump try to get the, the military or the FBI or the CIA or anybody, anybody in the deep state to, so-called deep state, I disavow that name, to uh, keep him in office or did he peacefully leave when it was time for him to leave? He fought like H-E double toothpicks to get his what he thought was his rightful win, and then he l let it go, because we have to have peace. He's a law and order candidate, law and order president. He's like the most law and order, and they're going, and the fake law and order are, <laughs> shout out to Joe Rogan's little buddies. <laughs> the fake law and order people are being lame, trying to go after the man who's trying to uphold the law. The one who's the best for uh, the border situation and all that. <laughs> that, that guy, the funny-looking guy, looks like an excellent listener, says Ohio Sentinel 2023 over on Rumble. Yeah, 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 because he has this big old ears. But this one, let me, since I have the picture of him up, I might as well look up this black dude. Donald Sherman. Sherman Crew. Let's see. Donald K. Sherman. Influence Watch. Senior Vice President and Chief Counsel for Citizens, Responsibility, and Ethics in Washington, crew. Return to the group from the White House. Leading Policy Advisor on Racial Justice and Equity. That doesn't sound promising in terms of that guy being a, a, a person for what's sensible and right. Those are not sensible notions. No such thing as racial justice. And equity is a communist buzzword. Government ethics. Uh, ethics is what the liberals use instead of morality because they have no morality. They ab they've abolished all morality, so they replaced it with ethics. That's what I say. Some of you guys may differ. That's okay. 888-77-JESSE. 1-888-775-3773. So that's that guy. R silly. So it's a ridiculous crew. A, a woman judge... A, uh, that guy with the big ears who looks like a good listener, maybe. Maybe he's good at hearing, but not good at... He doesn't have ears to hear spiritual ears. Oh, and then look at this. This is Katanji. Oh, no, go back to... Oh, yeah, that is the guy with the ears. <laughs> Just FYI. There's Katanji. Onyika Brown Jackson. I forgot about her. She has weighed in on more questions of January 6th so-called rioting. Some of it was rioting. Others of it was not. Uh, than any other so-called Supreme Court member. Wow. That's bad news. She's the most biased judge. Most blabbermouth judge. Talkative. Talk, talk, talk. Yapping woman. Black woman, too. Liberal. Anti- Beautiful rebel flag, by the way. She protested the, the flying of the rebel flag at, like, Harvard University by, I think, fellow students, classmates. No love for the beautiful South, for her 
white southern brothers. So evil. This sister does not love her white brothers, brothers, southern brothers anyway, southern brothers of the beautiful south who love the rebel flag and the confederate flag. They're part of, they, they were annexed by, re-annexed by America basically. Where's the love? No love. So sick. She's been shown to be, this is a CNN article, she was shown to be the most blabbermouthed, talking way too much, so-called justice on the Supreme Court, whereas our greatest justice, present day, I think, Clarence Thomas. They have something on him. In this same article, he talks the least. He talks the least. What does this article say about Justice Thomas? Uh, I don't have any picture of him, but there's a recusal question. They're trying to get Justice Thomas to recuse himself. Jump down to number two there. This is the last screenshot for this uh, little segment here. Not so little segment. Then I'll get to calls, guys. Co- so-called conservative justice, he's pretty conservative. Clarence Thomas has faced pressure to recuse himself from the case from liberals who should have no say on what's just, right? Who have seized on his wife's conservative activism, Ginny Thomas, a fellow fan and friend of Jesse Lee Peterson, by the way. She's interviewed JLP. Clarence Thomas has talked to JLP a number of times. In a letter sent by eight Democrat lawmakers, demon rats, to Justice Thomas last month, as the court was considering whether to take Trump's appeal, the so-called lawmakers argued Virginia Ginny Thomas, G-I-N-N-I, is for short for Virginia, her role in the January 6th Stop the Steal rally, remember that? She was for Trump. And she's white, by the way that she attended makes it unthinkable the justice could be impartial in deciding whether the event constituted an insurrection. Well, if any man can be impartial, it is Justice Clarence Thomas. And these people are not partial. Listen to this. Here's the quote. Here's a quote from the dumb letter. Not only did your wife attend the January 6th rally, but she was instrumental in planning it and bringing the insurrectionists to the Capitol. The Democrats wrote like the people who are okay. So there are people who did riot, right? Like they would be listening to Ginny Thomas. Give me a break. They were Ginny Thomas had no role in those people going to break the windows and mosh with the police. They probably don't even know who she is. They're just rough around the edges. Trump supporters. In some cases, there was like this Hispanic guy who pepper sprayed a cop or something, gave him a heart attack. There was this other guy who was, who, like, threw or hit a uh, fire extinguisher at a couple cops. Only Trump supporters died that day. And then a Trump supporter cop died that afternoon, evening, um, just of, like, a stroke or something. Officer Sicknick. Insurrectionist. You already disqualified yourself from having any say over Justice Thomas. Thomas has so far resisted the recusal calls. To his credit, stand strong. Justice Clarence Thomas, based. He or any ju- other justice could recuse themselves at any point. They are not required to explain themselves either way. Right on, Clarence Thomas. Nice. So that's that story. Thank you, Hassan. Appreciate that.